Hey, welcome to Mini Beginner's Crash Course. My name is Lisa Jung, and I'm a developer advocate at Elastic. This course is for developers who want to get started with Elasticsearch and Kibana. In Season 2, we're building a full-stack JavaScript app that could search for earthquake data stored in Elasticsearch. In the previous episode, we built the client side of our app. Using the client, the user could search for earthquakes based on the criteria that they select, and these are type, magnitude, location, and date range. The client is designed to capture the user input and send it to the server. In this episode, we'll set up the server to pass the user input into an Elasticsearch request and send it to Elasticsearch. Elasticsearch will then retrieve the relevant documents and send the documents to the server. We'll set up our server to receive these documents and send the documents to the client so the results could be displayed to the user. So let's talk about the relevant resources for this episode. All the links to these resources are included in the description box. Throughout the episode, I'll be going over terminal commands and code. If you want to copy and paste these, check out part 9 of the blog series as these are all included there. Next, we have a GitHub repo for episode 9. So check out branch 6 for the project directory from this episode. In this episode, we'll be talking about the bool query. We covered this in season 1, so we're going to breeze through this. But if you need a refresher, check out these videos here. All right, let's get right to it. Open your earthquake app directory using your code editor. Within the server directory, locate the server.js file and replace the existing code with the code shown here. And the code is found in blog part nine. Let's go over the newly added code. In line four, we import course dependency we've installed in episode two. We'll be using course to allow our server and client of different origins to exchange information without encountering a course error. We use line 12 to enable all course requests. Using lines 14 through 66, we create an endpoint called for slash results to handle HTTP requests from the client. Remember, when the user clicks on the search button, the client sends the user input to the server. These are type, mag, location, date range, and sort option. Now lines 15 through 19 create constants for the user input received from the client. In 1 through 64, we define the send Elasticsearch request function. This function is designed to send a search request to Elasticsearch and retrieve earthquake documents that match the user selected criteria. In line 22, we create a constant called body and set it equal to the client.search method. Within this method, we leave instructions for Elasticsearch on what documents that we wish to retrieve. In line 23, we instruct Elasticsearch to search against the index earthquakes. In the request body, we include the search criteria. Using the client, a user could sort the search results by descending or ascending order of magnitude. Let's look at lines 25 through 31. To accomplish this, we add the sort parameter in the request body. We specify that the search results must be ordered by the value of the field mag. Now the sorting order is determined by the user input pass sort option. In line 32, we instruct Elasticsearch to retrieve up to 300 matching documents. Let's look at lines 33 through 60. Our app is designed to retrieve earthquake documents that match the user's chosen criteria regarding type, mag, location, and date range. And the documents must match all four of the user's criteria to be considered as a search result. In order to retrieve such documents, we'll write four queries and combine them into one request. The bool query becomes super handy for our use case. We covered this query in season one, so we're going to breeze through it. In a bool query, we use a combination of one or more clauses to narrow down our search results. In our case, documents in the earthquakes index either match or do not match the user's criteria. Therefore, we'll use the filter clause to retrieve documents that match the user's input. Using our client, a user could select the type of quake from the drop-down menu. When a user selects an option, 
the user input is sent to the server and saved as a constant called pass type. Pass type contains the option value the user has selected from the drop down menu. Since we're looking for a specific term such as earthquake, query blast, ice quake, or explosion, we use the term query. We instruct Elasticsearch to look for the term contained in the constant pass type in the field type. Using our client, a user could select a level of magnitude from the drop down menu. These options allow the users to search for earthquakes with magnitudes greater than or equal to 2.5. 5.5, 6.1, 7, and 8. When a user selects an option, the user input is sent to the server and saved as a constant called passmag. Passmag contains the value of the chosen option. Since we're looking for documents that reflect a range of magnitudes, we use a range query for this task. We run the range query on the field mag and we look for documents that contain values that are greater than or equal to the value of pass mag. Using our client, a user could type in the location in which they want to search for earthquakes. The user input is sent to the server and saved as a constant called pass location. Pass location contains whatever text the user has typed in. To search the field place for the type user input, full text search should be performed Therefore, we use the match query to look for pass location in the field place. Using our client, a user could choose the date range of earthquake occurrence. The user input is sent to the server and saved as a constant called pass date range. Pass date range contains a date range option the user has selected. And these could be past 7 days, past 14 days, past 21 days, and past 30 days. Since we're looking for documents that reflect a range of dates, we need to use the range query for this task. We run the range query on the field timestamp. Here, we're instructing Elasticsearch to look for documents whose timestamp falls within the past X days that the user has specified. At first glance, these lines of code may look complicated, so let's break this down. Now, the term GTE stands for greater than or equal to the term LT stands for less than. Now we use these terms to specify the date range that a document must fall into to be considered as a search result. The term here represents the current timestamp. In other words, the time when your request reaches Elasticsearch. Therefore, we're telling Elasticsearch to find the documents that fall between now and now minus past date range, which is the number of days specified by the user. As a result, Elasticsearch will look for documents whose timestamp falls within the past X days that the user has specified. When the request is sent to Elasticsearch, Elasticsearch will retrieve relevant documents and send these to the server. And once the documents have been received by the server, the server is instructed to send the documents to the client so it could display the search results. We call the send Elasticsearch request function so it would execute when the server receives an HTTP request to the forward slash results endpoint. All right, so let's test this to see if this works. So go to your terminal, cd into the project directory, and execute npm start to start the server. Now you'll see that server started and is connected to Elasticsearch. Next, open a new tab cd into the project directory, then into the client directory, then execute npm start to start the client. Now you'll see the client displayed here. Next, we'll specify the criteria of earthquakes that we're looking for. So make the selection. And once you're done, click on the search button. If Elasticsearch contains the documents you're looking for, you'll see the search results displayed in the form of cards. Now let's switch things up a bit. I'm going to change the type of Quake to Query Blast and send the search request. 
Now, if Elasticsearch does not have the documents you seek, you'll see the following message displayed on the page. There you have it. You have successfully created a full stack app where users could search for earthquake data stored in Elasticsearch. Next, we're going to explore our data even further. In the next episode, we're going to use Kibana Lens to visualize data. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the final episode.